The National Hurricane Center now highlighting an area for development and the models getting a little bit more aggressive. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice keeping up to date on all things going on right now. Several areas that we've got to keep a close watch on, including the European being a bit aggressive with this system for you in the Caribbean islands with a couple of different waves back toward the west. Plus, the GFS not playing around with the Gulf of Mexico. It's showing a couple of different areas on different various models that we need to watch that could become named storm systems. So folks, in this video, I'll map out potential timing if we do get impacts, areas that could be uh, in the crosshairs for this. We'll look at the different scenarios, plus at the building heat wave. Yeah, many across the eastern half of the United States about to experience a heat wave, and I don't use that lightly. We're talking September. Some are going to be in the 90s, but some in the upper 90s for a stretch. Folks, my whole deal is to keep you posted about all things severe weather. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on those notifications to get up to date on all things that are going on right now. And please, in the comment section, let me know where you're watching from. I do these updates every day, and I'm going to read your comments from last video and your concerns and give you some shout outs. So please, in this video, let me know where you're watching from, and um, maybe we'll get to say hello on that for tomorrow. So folks, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's going to be a warm day across a good bit of the area as we're going to start to see things start to crank up heat wise across a good bit of the United States. Let's look at what's going on with rainfall totals because Florida has been the only area that's been active as we go throughout the next two to three days southeast Florida. Broward County, Miami, um, South, uh, you're probably talking about things getting a little bit more active. Uh, but that said, the rest of the Southeast just big goose egg as far as activity is concerned because there's been a front that's gone through and as we move forward here, South, here we are that front just hanging out over South Florida, while the rest of the Southeast in that really pretty tame category with that big ridge of high pressure settling in. I don't see anything that brings in any big changes for quite a while here. In fact, this big ridge looks to peak. You see, it almost looks like a little face. You got two eyes and a nose right there. Either way, you've got this big ridge building in right here. Sunday, Monday could be extreme heat here. We're talking about mid to upper 90s, and that's extreme for this time of the year, and especially when uh, you combine that with several days of that. So we're talking about hazardous heat at some football games in and around the Midwest. You know, Chicago could be that hot. You see it bubbling up here as we go day by day this week. Several 90s locking in. At least the mornings are refreshing across the Appalachian Mountains. But look at this. By Thursday, Friday, low to mid 90s settling in. Let's go Saturday. Look at that. Just intense heat back toward the west. Panhandle of Florida, you're getting in on some heat too, 90s. But again, nothing likes just toward the west. You got a couple of 97s in here for parts of Arkansas. All right. Share that with your family and friends again. Can't get over the crisp, cool mornings here. Even though it turns hot in the afternoon across these areas, Sunday looks to be the bulk of this. Look at this, 98s. You got several of these 95s going up here toward the upper Midwest. And it's humid in this area toward the coast as well. And going into next week, looks like that, that heat continues multiple 95 to 100 degree days. This is not the heat index. If you were to do the heat anomalies to see what it actually feels like, thankfully there's not a whole lot of humidity up here. So what it reads on the thermometer is what it actually feels like. And this is a drought stricken area. Arkansas is just really, really dry right now. So wildfires will become a concern in Tennessee and in Arkansas. And we're talking about some intense heat during that time frame as well. And it looks like this area may see the drought persist and even grow in some locations. How about the tropics? Yeah, we've got an area highlighted here by the National Hurricane Center. It is something to watch in the coming days. It is nothing to stress about yet. And I uh, tell you that folks in the Caribbean islands that, uh, hey, this time last week, if the models were right, you would be dealing with a major hurricane coming on board today. That did not happen. Thankfully, dry air succumbed that system or the system succumbed to the dry air and uh, led to it being a really stifled out system. And uh, thankfully, that's been the case since then. 
but we do have some more aggression on the models. That dry air is cyclical. It does not stay put for very long. And because it does travel over a great distance, now we have the ability, being that it's the peak of hurricane season, to get some waves to form. And National Hurricane Center placing this for the next week. So even though it doesn't form till Sunday, Monday, it's in that wheelhouse of seven days. So here we go. This does show uh, something forming, likely Gabrielle, but also, don't let your guard down in the Caribbean and the Gulf. There's a little something trying to form here. Here we are. Got double eyes right here. This would be next Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday, nine days out. Uh, so the models have been hinting at this little area right here a couple of different times. This one looks to begin to curve. The stronger it gets earlier, it goes out to sea. Should even stay east of Bermuda, which would be incredible. And then there's not much cooking after that for a little bit. Let's go deeper in with the European. It shows that wave getting a little more organized, not until Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and then Saturday, Sunday, boy, it starts really cranking into another gear. I mean, it just blows up over the middle of the Atlantic and moves off toward the east. The Euro AI, similar story. Wave doesn't organize until Tuesday, Wednesday's time frame and it moves toward the Caribbean islands. This could mean some wind, some rain for you next weekend, Saturday into Sunday for the northern part of the island chain. I don't see it being significant right now in this Euro AI, but this is something to watch as this would be coming on shore Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then gaining in intensity there toward the last frame right there. But does this show anything in the Gulf? I don't think it did. No, Euro AI does not buy into the Gulf solution, which the GFS does. See it forming there. It's weak on the latest GFS. Uh, the 12Z had something a little bit closer to Florida, but again, weak. Maybe tropical depression, tropical storm, but nothing to really write home about. The only strong model was the 6Z. It had it going up through New Orleans, Alabama, Georgia, Carolinas. That would not be great compact little system cat one cat two maybe does something like that uh let's see the zero z yesterday did not have it so you got a couple of different solutions out of these models uh, if you average together all 51 different runs of them it does show the european getting active with a couple of different waves going toward the west looks like the trajectory though would keep them north of the islands but we got to watch it because some of the members do have some development there. You can see those in a different way on the tracks map. You see a lot of them already starting that north to northeast turn a little bit early on. So that would be good news if something does form. Looks like it would try to inch that way in some form or fashion. So that's kind of the way things are shaping up right now, folks. I uh, do want to get to your questions. And folks, if you have questions for me, uh, I want to respect your time. I want to get to these questions, save those for the end of the video, and uh, make sure that uh, you drop your comment right now where you're watching from right now. And uh, perhaps your comment and question will be covered in our next section. Uh, but here we go. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. We have got a couple of different people in the house. So let's get to it. Uh, let's see if I got it framed up right. I could scoot it over a little bit, couldn't I? The comments never want to kind of frame right in this, but here we go. There we go, there we go. All right, Mark, good evening, Chris. Pensacola in the house. It was hot again today, but the evening has cooled off a bit. Same here. It, it got a little toasty here for me today, but uh, walking outside with the kids at dinner, uh, boy, it was nice. Uh, thank you for your update and area to watch. Believe me, we're watching. Keeping fingers crossed too. Mark, yeah, you got a lot to watch. The Gulf is kind of a hot spot right now that we need to stay dialed in on. Um, thanks for the information. Best place for our updates. South Florida is watching. Hey, thank you for that. Robin says, I appreciate your weather reports. No hype or unnecessary stress. God bless you, sir. Watching from Florida. Robin, thank you for that. That means the world to me. I never try to hype. Uh, I do talk about systems. I, it's kind of the point of this page. Uh, so uh, we do go in depth on systems. Uh, we show the ins and outs of them. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not for everybody. Some people think, well, you're hyping it because you're talking about it. No, I'm, I'm very quick to tell you when it's time to be concerned. And, and more importantly, when it's not time to be concerned. So you stay tuned on that. I'll let you know when it's time to ratchet it up a little bit or when it's time to dial it back. 
nothing to be stressed about right now as there's several areas to watch, but nothing of much consequence showing up. We got Chipper watching right now from Myrtle Beach. Hey, thank you, Chipper. Uh, I love your weather reports. No hype and straight to the point. Watching from Inglis, Florida. Hey, thank you, Charlotte. I work for a major insurance company. Watching the hurricanes affects my work schedule, as you could imagine. Last year, it was all hands on deck, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, up until Christmas Day. Oh my goodness, Charlotte. Thank you, first of all, for, for what you do for your community and, um, and, and your work that you're doing. Uh, I know so many people rely on that. So, wow, I, I can only imagine given what last year was. Peter says, a warm welcome from the island of Barbados. Thank you for an amazing forecast, Peter. Man, that means the world to me. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends and family in Barbados that uh, I say hello and that this is the place to be for dialing in on it. I know you have multiple options uh, to check out weather, and it means the world that you'd be here to check it out, and I will keep you posted. Rose, good evening. Uh, I'm watching from the Gulf, Sarasota. I live on the bay. This is a switch you're seeing in your forecast from last night, which leaves me no questions because you're always right on it. Always a pleasure. Keep up your great work. Rose, thank you. Thank you for always tuning in. And Sarasota, tell all my friends, family down there in Sarasota, Chris says hello. And, uh, you know, go check out Yoder's for me. <laughs> go tell them hello. Uh, Hollywood, Florida here drying out from yesterday. Over two inches of standing water in my back patio. No. Good thing the house is a foot up. Yeah, no doubt. That's a lot of water. Uh, it's been just raining nonstop. Tampa area watching enjoy some cooler temperatures in the morning. Yeah, even even parts of Florida getting into some of this uh, comfortable air doesn't last as long, but uh, certainly been feeling good here lately. John says two days of great weather in the evening and around northeast Florida. We're 30 minutes southwest of St. Augustine, multiple inches on both days. Good evening, Chris. Mike from Arizona says thank you for the great videos. We got Lakeland, Florida in the house. Anderson, South Carolina. I've been telling my family about the weather when they ask me. Hey, Sydney, that's great. Uh, what, what a great way. That's how I started. Uh, I became a, a little, I guess, meteorologist for my home and would tell everybody, hey, you know it's going to snow, right? And they'd be like, no, it's not. And I'd tell them how much, when. I'd go to school. I'd tell everybody, hey, hey, it's going to snow. <laughs> snow was my big thing that got me into weather growing up in the mountains, North Carolina. Uh, good evening, Chris. Watching from Orlando. Davis, North Carolina. Pickens, South Carolina. Richard says, Mr. Justice, glad to see it's quiet in the tropics, especially during the peak of hurricane season. What do you think about the possibilities of snow in the Northwest PD of South Carolina this year? I know there is a weak La Nina, but also I love watching the polar vortex. It looks like a toss up between which one is influencing our weather at a time, especially if we have enough cold air and moisture around. Yeah, certainly. It, all it takes is one pattern to get the cold air in place and in comes the moisture. I think we're due. I think we're overdue for a storm like that in South Carolina. So I'll keep you posted on that. I'm about to do my winter forecast probably within the next two or three weeks. I'm working on it right now. There's a few more pieces of data I want to see come in before I release that, but I think it'll be soon. Um, hi, Chris from Panama City. Hey, one of my favorite places in this world. Love, love, love me some Panama City Beach. Watching from Baytown, Texas. You're wonderful. You're a wonderful meteorologist. Thank you for your information because I'm traveling on the 10th to the 17th. I come back to Texas from New York. My question is, do you think by the 17th anything happening in the Gulf I need to worry about getting home? I'm a bit worried. Um, right now, we can go back to the maps here. Let's do that for you, Michelle. I want to want to look at that real quick for you. If something were to form, would it be gone by the 17th? It's a good question. Well, let's look at the different models. The 17th, nothing's even trying to form until the 18th, 19th. Um, so if I heard you right, you would be back by then or you would be gone by then? Let me see if I can pull that back up. Where are you at here? See folks, that's what I try to do, give you some answers. Um, I'm traveling on the 10th to the 7th. So you're leaving today. You're, go you're going. Okay. You're fine. I think anything that forms would be after that time frame. I think that you would see things uh, be back to normal by then, even if something did form, which right now looks to be a little less likely. Kind of the way I'm seeing it as things are shaping out. Okay, Port St. Lucie. We got Naples in the house. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Southwest Florida, Punta Gorda. Taparon Springs, tar Tarpon, Tarpon Springs, Florida. Almost got that wrong, Cynthia. Thank you for watching. Robert, Hurricane, 
really get real. Oh, man, Robert, be nice. Why are you going to come on here and say that? <laughs> yeah, the models do show a hurricane. It's the facts. Downstate Mount Pleasant, Holland, thank you for watching. What do we got here? Let's translate this. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Felix. Hey, uh, folks, thank you for being here. Uh, it's a place that we can connect. It's a place we can ask questions. It's a place we can uh, share in our love for meteorology, right? And I get to do that on TV every day, which is a blessing. But also here online is something I just really, really love as I get to share that uh, passion with you. Folks, have a great evening and I or day, morning, whatever time you're watching this from, and I'll keep you posted around the clock, okay?